Just a variation of, of performing this palpation. Uh, and I know some of you uh, are used to doing it this way because this is how you've probably been taught in lower trimesters. And it's, it's just another way to perform this, sit up nice and straight. You can use a, a double thumb, crooked index, or you can reinforce your digits like that. Right, right, you guys, you've seen this before. Right, so you can contact, I was showing this as a unilateral palpation. You can do this as a bilateral palpation in the mid thoracic. Just get your patient to come back, either contacting in front, can use the chin to help you do that, or just help, the patient can help guide themselves back, and then spring anterior to posterior to anterior, just like that. Go above a level, come back for me a little bit, head back a little bit, and spring forward, and then go down a level and spring forward. Uh, let's talk about flexion for a moment. So for flexion, uh, typically what we would do is put a digit in the interspinous space, have the patient flex forward, and then try and spring on that. I don't find that a particularly useful palpation because there's so much resistance from the, the thick interspinous ligaments that it's very challenging to feel, feel any spring when you do that. Uh, again, go back to your observation. If they're very flat, they have a very flat portion of the thoracic spine, that's an area that's going to need flexion, right? And the other thing is just to see whether or not the interspinous space is open. So kind of just bring your patient forward, palpate three spaces at a time, and now come sit up straight again. And you can move down a level and have them come all the way forward and you can see and feel the inner spinous space is open. And that will suffice for assessing whether or not patient needs flexion. So for basic rib palpation for the mid thoracic spine, we're going to start with our patient prone. And we're going to just take our thumbs or we can use our thenars or we can use digits. And we're just going to palpate over the costal transverse joint starting up at around T3, T4. And just take your whole hand, spread the digits out, and just spring from posterior to anterior, locating the, the articulations with your thumbs. If you feel an area that's particular, particularly resistant, you can double, uh, use a double thumb contact on it and spring. You okay with that? Is that a little tender at all? all right. The, uh, the rib restrictions usually are tender. You can get that feedback from the patient. You'll often feel hypertonicity over the area as well. Uh, so again, just continue down, just springing on those ribs. It's not that complicated. Rib palpation, not that complicated. Uh, although we tend to t sometimes make things complicated. Just spring on them from posterior to anterior. When you get down to around T8, T9, all right, what you can do is it's called a, an ileal lift. So I'm just going to use my hypothenor, my hand underneath the ilium. I'm going to palpate that T8, T9 down to T12 by lifting up the pelvis and just giving a nice gentle spring on the costotransverse articulations in the lower thoracic spine down to around T12. And of course I come around the other side of the table and do the same thing. Uh, there's a, uh, one more way to, to uh, palpate the ribs. So we're going to palpate the ribs, those mid ribs, T4, T8, supine as well. You can actually get a little bit higher with this palpation. We're going to use our digits curled up. We're going to make a very firm bridge with our hand, just like that. And we're going to use these four digits across to load the patient's body weight with that contact right underneath the ribs. So what that's going to look like, it's going to roll towards me. Right, let me actually use this hand. I'm gonna roll towards me. And I'm gonna make that contact. I'm gonna roll you a little bit more just so the camera can see that. I'm gonna come out over the rib cage, very firm contact. I'm gonna maintain that bridge and just gonna use my patient's body weight to kind of get a sense of the resistance. I like this palpation a lot because it will take the compression, the pressure of the table away from the thorax, and I can really feel quite a bit of the rib movement, or as you're looking for it, the lack of rib movement, just by using the patient's body weight. Actually, you're not too bad on this side. Everything's moving pretty good. And I'll move up and down the spine like that. 
uh, down to, like I said, around T7, T8. This will work pretty well. Then the other nice thing about this palpation is it will also segue right into one of the manipulations we'll do. So if you find a re rib restriction, all you need to do is change your contact and you can segue that right into an adjustment. So we're going to review a, a number of different ways to palpate joint play and segmental range of motion and uh, end feel in the thoracic spine. We're going to start off with our patient prone. This should be a review of some of the techniques you've already practiced in second, third, and fourth trimester. So for that mid-thoracic spine joint play, P to A joint play, digital contact index and middle finger right over the TPs, the tips right over the TPs, and then reinforce that with the other hand. And when you perform this palpation, you want to lean into it and use your body weight to push the contact hand into the joints to elicit that P to A spring. We're starting down a little bit lower. Again, just lean in. Spring, slide up to the next level, and spring. You want to lift up a little bit, but not too much so you don't stress your hand to isolate just the fingertips to the joint. Now we can do the same type of palpation, P to A spring, using our thenars. Right? It's a little broader, not as specific, but it would look like this. Just make the contact, kind of almost just like you would do the adjustment. But the, the thing is, you want to really use your body weight to create this spring. And you can palpate all the way up to the, the upper thoracic spine, take it all the way down to the lower thoracic spine as well. The next one we're going to do prone is the counter-rotational joint play. So you'll remember this is where you take two thumbs on adjacent segments. So there's a spinous and there's the spinous below. Now what I want to make sure I do is go, once I find the tip of the spinous, take it to the base of the spinous, because you don't want to put that kind of pressure on the tip of the spinous, it'll be uncomfortable, all right? Take the other contact to the base of the spinous below. Now you have a counter-rotational contact, and again, once my thumbs are in place, I want to really use my body weight to kind of sense, get a sense of that counter-rotational joint play. In this case, it would be left rotation, of the upper segment. Okay. So what we're going to do here is palpate the lower, middle, and upper thoracic spines. All right. So <clears throat> for the for the lower thoracic spine and middle thoracic spine, the palpation is going to be identical. All right. When we get to the upper thoracic spine, we'll have to modify this a little bit to compensate for the cervical spine being part of that movement. So for, for rotation and lateral flexion, we're going to place our thumb either on a lower or middle thoracic segment, right? Just right next to the spinous, but not too close to the tip. Again, it's going to be sensitive if, if you perform it that way. I'm going to take my fingertips and place them right over the adjacent part of the thoracolumbar area. My hands resting on top of their shoulders. And my elbows tucked in front of the opposite shoulder. And I can rotate my patient around, and then that's the segmental motion, right? segmental motion of left rotation, and then spring across to elicit the end feel. Right? From this position, I can also laterally bend my patient over the contact, right? segmental motion of left lateral flexion, and then I can use both of my arms to elicit that left lateral uh, left lateral flexion joint play. It would look exactly the same in the mid thoracic spine. So I'm on the left side of the spinous process here in the mid thoracic area. Rotate my patient around and add some overpressure. Go up to the segment above. Rotate the patient around. Add some overpressure. Go to the segment below. Rotate the patient around and add some overpressure for the, for the end feel. Same thing with lateral flexion. That was all left rotation. So here's left lateral flexion, overpressure, compared to the segment above. Again, notice I'm using my entire hand to engage this. Left lateral flexion, go to the segment below, left lateral flexion.
All right. For flexion extension, I'm going to maintain my hands on top. can use digital contacts to feel the inner spinous space is open. Let yourself fold up a little bit more. Feel the inner spinous space is open. Have the patient come back, feel them close. Same thing in the lower thoracic spine. Feel the inner spinous space is open. Kind of let yourself curl forward a little bit. There we go. And then have them come back and feel them extend. So segmental range of motion for our end play, we're going to add some overpressure to that. So for the extension end play, you can use a thumb reinforced contact like that. We can use a thumb index contact like that. So just place your contact right over the segmental uh, region. You want to feel that extension in, right? And then extend that patient back over the contact. That's your segmental range of motion. And use your body weight to elicit that joint play. As we get towards the middle and upper thoracic spine, you might have a little bit of a challenge performing that. So what you could do is use the patient's arms to help you. So place your hands behind your neck. Yes, and bring your elbows in. That's it. And that can help me to create that extension overplay. So segmental range of motion on the way, and then I'll list at the end play by applying overpressure. For flexion and play, come forward, you can drop your arms down. You can, drop your arms down. You can flex the patient. You could put your thumb in the inner spinal space and press, or just kind of use your other hand to appreciate how much give there is. It's very challenging to actually push on the spinous above and really feel anything. It's not my, it's one of those end feels that is, you're not going to really feel much when you try and do that. So, so notice how much the spinous is open and how much give there is when you apply some overpressure with the other hand. You can add a little overpressure with the contact itself and just kind of get a sense of what you're feeling there. For the upper thoracic spine, we're going to add a few more uh, techniques to help us palpate this, right? So sit up nice and tall for me. For rotation, just contact the side of the spinous process, rotate the patient's head around, and then use your, your elbow on the shoulder to rotate the torso around, and then apply your overpressure. Come back to the center, go down a segment, go up a segment, compare three segments, and then of course compare it to the other side as well. For lateral flexion, thumb right along the spinous process, bring the head into lateral flexion, and then add some overpressure. Come up a segment, bring the head into lateral flexion. You notice I have my elbow on the shoulder as well, and I'm using that to help guide into lateral flexion. Go down a segment, and again, add some overpressure. So that's lateral flexion, rotation. For flexion extension, again, feel the inner spinous space is open. Apply a little overpressure, not a lot, because you, you don't want to stress the cervical spine too much in flexion. Feel the inner spinous space is open. Bring the head back. Thumb index contact. Bring the head back like that. Apply some overpressure. Or again, use the arms to help you do this. Hands behind your head. Hands behind your neck. All right. Tuck the elbows in. Extension, segmental, come back to neutral. And then over pressure. Come back to neutral. Okay, and bring those down. So we did flexion extension, lateral flexion rotation, the cervical thoracic spine as well. Did flexion extension, lateral flexion rotation, mid and lower thoracics, segmental movement, and end play, with applying overpressure to elicit the end play. And uh, we did P to A uh, joint play uh, using our reinforced digits and using our thenars, and then some counter-rotational joint play using the th bilateral thumb spinus.